this lesson, I'm going to go through some examples of exponent law that frequently cause problems. They address three rules. First, the negative exponent law. So the negative exponent law says that if you've got a to the exponent negative m, that's equal to 1 over a to the positive m. Second rule we're going to look at is the power of a fraction law, where you have a divided by b all to an exponent m, which is equal to a to the m divided by b to the m. And the third law we'll be looking at is the fractional exponent law, which says that a to the exponent m over n is equal to the nth root of a to the m. Let's take a look at the first example. The simplest example is x to the negative 1, which we know from the exponent law is 1 over x. Let's look at a slightly more complicated example, which would be x to the negative 2. In order to do this, let's take the exponent as two separate pieces. There's the negative and the 2. Let's take them one at a time. So we'll start with the negative, and from this example, from the law, we know that the negative is going to make it a 1 over situation. So we've got 1 over. And now we pay attention to the 2 along with the x, and we end up with over x squared. So the key is really to think of it in two steps. First, you deal with the negative. You do it as a 1 over. Then you worry about the squared along with the x. So you get 1 over x squared. If we're working with a fraction, say we have a over b, and all of that is put to a negative 1 exponent. Remember, it's the same as saying 1 over whatever that is, which is 1 over a to the b. We could go through the algebra, but essentially what it really means is take your a over b and flip it upside down to b over a to whatever that exponent is, which in this case is 1. So if we had a divided by b all to the negative 2, it would be the same as b over a squared which is also then equal to b squared divided by a squared. In this example, we first started dealing with the fact that we had a negative, so we're dealing with the negative exponent law, and then we started dealing with the second law, which is the power of a fraction law, where the exponent that was put over the fraction goes on to both the top and the bottom. If we want to work through some of these examples with some real numbers, supposing we had 4 to the negative 2, that would be the same as saying 1 over 4 squared, which would be the same as 1 over 16. In the case of a over b, let's say we had 3 over 8, all of that to the negative 3, we would turn that into 8 over 3 to the positive 3, which can also be written as 8 cubed divided by 3 cubed. Let's do another example which is a little more complicated and combines another rule. In this case it will be the product rule. Suppose we had 6 to the minus 6 times 6 to the 4th, all of that divided by 6 to the 5th times 6 to the minus 8th. We're going to start off just by simplifying the top. When we've got two like bases here, this is a product. So we've got the like bases of 6 and 6. The product exponent law says we keep the same base and we add the exponents. So we've got 6 to the exponent of negative 6 plus 4. I'm just going to continue on just with the top part of this equation for the moment. And when we add those together, we get 6 to the minus 2. Leave it there for the moment. Now we do the same on the bottom. We've got 6 to the 5th times 6 to the minus 8th. We take those two and we say 5 plus a minus 8, which is the same as subtracting minus 8. So we get 6 to the minus 3. Now we've got a somewhat unusual circumstance here where we've got negative exponents on both sides, the top and bottom. So we could go it's 1 over 6 squared divided by 1 over 6 cubed. We can think back to the simple example where we had a over b to the minus 1, and we know that that simply turns it upside down, where we end up with b over a. That means we can simply take this 
and turn it upside down. So we end up with 6 cubed divided by 6 squared. So we turn it upside down, and then we can change the exponents, each to be positives. And as a final step, we've now got a division question where we've got the 6 cubed over the 6 squared. In division, we keep the same base and we subtract the exponents. So this is going to be equal to 6 to the exponent of 3 minus 2, which of course is just 1, which is just 6. Those were some examples working with a negative exponent. Now we're going to start looking at fractional exponents. 16 to the exponent x is equal to 2. As we move further along in the course, we're going to start using something called logs or logarithms to address these kinds of problems. But there is a way to solve this, particularly with simple numbers, without having to use logs. So let's backtrack a little bit first. We know that when we take the number 4 and put it to an exponent of 0, we get 1. If we take the number 4 and put it to the exponent of 1, we get 4. Take the number 4, put it to the exponent 2, we get 16, and so on. We also know from talking about the negative exponent law that if we take 4 to the negative 1, we get 1 over 4. And if we take 4 to the negative 2, we get 1 over 16. So we can see that the numbers here are getting smaller as fractions, although by making the bottom number bigger. What we've got happening here, though, is we're starting with a big number, a whole number, and we're ending up with a smaller number. So we went from a big number here to a smaller number over here. Most people's first reaction is to think about division. But division isn't quite what we need to be doing, because remember, we're working here with an exponent. So we're asking what exponent do we need to get to a smaller number? Well, you can see here that increasing to whole numbers as the exponents, that just gives us a bigger number. So that's not going to help us. So we know that x isn't going to be a whole number. And we know that x isn't going to be a negative number. So what's left at that point? Well, what's left is the space in between 0 and 1, which are the fractions. So let's focus on that question again. 16 to the exponent x is equal to 2. I'm going to take that 16, divide it by 2, and I'm going to get 8. Then I'm going to take that 8 and divide it by 2, and I'm going to get 4. I'm going to take that 4, divide it by 2, and I'm going to end up with 2. If I look at all of these 2's I've left over, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4 2's. So I've got 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 equals 16. 2 times 2 gives me 4, times 2 is 8, and times 2 is 16. So 2 to the 4th is equal to 16. But that's not quite what we're trying to solve here. Remember, we are starting with 16. We've got an exponent x, and we want to end up with 2. But this number is going to help us. We've said that we want to end up with a fraction here for x. So let's say we take 16. We're going to have a fraction of 1 over something. And then I'm going to propose that we use this 4 that we found by doing all that division. What this is saying then is do the fourth root of 16, which should be equal to 2. If you do that on your calculator, you will find that in fact the fourth root of 16 is 2. 625 to the x is equal to 5. Let's use the method that I just went through. Let's take 625, divide it by 5, we're going to get 125. Then we take that 125, divide that by 5, and we're going to get 25. Divide that by 5, and we're going to get 5. So we end up with 5 to the exponent 5 is equal to 625. Using that approach then of saying let's take the 5, we know we're going from a big number to a small number. So we know we're going to have 625 to some kind of a fractional exponent. We can propose that we're going to take that 5 and make it 625 to the 1 -fifth exponent, which is the same as saying it's the fifth root of 625. And if we check that out, the fifth root of 625 is in fact equal to 5. Let's move on to looking at the power of a fraction. 
Let's take an example of x squared is equal to 1 over 25. To tackle this problem, first of all, I see I've got a positive whole number. I don't have a negative there. So if I had a negative, then I would be anticipating that, well, you know, a negative we know gives me a 1 over type of situation. But we don't have a negative here. We've got a positive. So since we've got a positive, and we're going to end up with a fraction, that means my x is going to start off as some kind of a fraction. I don't know what it's going to be yet, but I know it's going to be some kind of a fraction. The good thing here is in, in the examples in the questions we're going to be doing, you're never going to get anything more complicated than a 1 over type of fraction. So don't, this, method will, this method will work in these circumstances. We know we're looking for x to be some kind of a fraction. So let's think about that then for a moment. How would we solve this if it was just a regular algebra situation? We could look at it and say, okay, well, x squared, we want to get x alone, not x squared. Remember from algebra that whatever you do to one side of an equation, you do to the other. So I want to get just an x from an x squared. So I'm going to do the square root of x squared is equal to the square root of 1 over 25. This side, doing the square root of the square, gives me just x. And here I have the square root of 1 over 25. Now, another way of writing this would have been to say 1 over 25 to the exponent 1 half. The fractional exponent of 1 half is the same as a square root. And remember from the power of a fraction rule, we know that that same exponent applies to both the top and the bottom, the numerator and the denominator of a fraction. So I can simplify this to be x is equal to the square root of 1 divided by the square root of 25. The square root of 1 is of course just 1, and the square root of 25 you can do on a calculator if you don't recognize it right away to be 5. So we found a value for x of 1 over 5 or 1 fifth. 1 fifth squared is equal to 1 over 25, and if you think about it, 1 fifth squared is the same as saying 1 fifth times 1 fifth. To do that we multiply the 1 times the 1, which of course we get 1, 5 times the 5 gives us 25. Look at another example. x cubed is equal to 1 over 512. Following that same approach, this time we'll do the cube root of x cubed. What we did to this side, we also have to do to the other side, so we do the cube root of 1 over 512. Remembering that the cube root can apply to the top and the bottom, so we can apply it to the numerator alone and then the denominator alone. So we do the cube root of 1 divided by the cube root of 512. And again, we can know the cube root of 1 is 1, and the cube root of 512 we can do on our calculator, and we get the answer of 8. So x is 1 eighth, and 1 over 8 cubed is equal to 5, 1 over 512. And you can multiply that out, of course. 1 times 1 times 1, of course, is 1, and 8 times 8 is 64, times 8 is 512. Let's look at a minor variation of this as well. x to the negative 2 is equal to 1 over 25. In this circumstance, we've got two things going on. We've got, we're ending up with a fraction, but we do have a negative in this circumstance. So we can also say then, we could simplify instead of having x to the negative 2, we can also write that as 1 over x squared which is equal to 1 over 25. That's fairly easy to see now that x squared has to be equal to 25. So x then is the square root of 25 because if x squared is equal to 25 then x is equal to 5. So 5 to the negative 2 is equal to 1 over 25. Let's continue looking at power of a fraction. 1 quarter to the exponent x. So remember again, in the future we're going to do these we're using logs, but for now we can figure them out just using our knowledge of algebra and exponent laws. Recognizing that the power of a fraction law says that 1 quarter to the exponent x is the same as 1 to the exponent x divided by 4 to the exponent x. We know that 1 to any power is always going to be 1, so we can kind of ignore that for the moment, and we can just say 4 to the x is equal to 64. 
Let's start dividing 64 by 4. Keep going. We've ended up with 4 times 4 times 4, which is equal to 4 cubed. Based on that, we can now conclude that x is 3. Let's try that out in the original equation. 1 quarter to the exponent 3 would be the same as 1 quarter times 1 quarter times 1 quarter. 1's across the top are 1, 4 times 4 is 16, times 4 is 64. Now this problem is going to require us to harness a number of different rules. 1 over 64 to the exponent x is equal to 4. The first thing I want to look at is I'm starting with a fraction and I'm ending with a whole number. I've also got the unknown value up in the exponent. First thing I want to do is start thinking about how am I going to get from this fraction into a whole number. Well remember, if I have a fraction of 1 64th and I put it to an exponent of negative 1, that's going to give me 64. So I can be pretty sure that my x is going to be a negative exponent. However, if I just do a negative 1, now I've got 64, so I've got a much bigger number than what I want to end up with here. Right, 64, I want to end up with 4. So I've got to get from a bigger number to a smaller number. Thinking back, the way to get from a bigger number to a smaller number when we're working with exponents is using fractions. So a fractional exponent is going to allow us to take that 64 and make it smaller. So I want to see if my number here is a multiple of 4. I can either start testing some roots, so I could try the square root, the cube root, the quad root, and so on, or I could say 4 times 4 is equal to 16 times 4 is equal to 64. So I've got 1, 1, 2, 3 4's all together, so I've got 4 cubed. What I've now got is I figured out that I've got a negative here and I've got a 4 cubed. So if I take my 1 over 64 and I put it to an exponent of negative 1 over 3, I will get 4. Another way of writing this is I'm looking for 1 over the cube root of 64 is equal to 4. This next question I think is mostly just people not reading the question carefully. If you get something that says find the positive exponent base for this expression, it means you need to, the base needs to have a positive exponent on it. Seems pretty obvious, but let's take a look at an example. If we have 9 cubed times 9 squared times 9 to the minus 10th. Applying the product exponent law, we know that we keep the same base and we add the exponents. 3 plus 2 is 5, minus 10 gives us 9 to the minus 5. The question asked us for the positive exponent base, which means they're asking you to convert it into 1 over 9 to the 5th. Fairly simple, but some people were missing it. The final question, again, comes a little bit down to wording. Some of the questions ask us to find the smallest possible base for an expression. Let's try an example. You might say 64 cubed times 8 squared. I see right away there's a relationship between the 8 and the 64, because I remember that 8 times 8 is equal to 64, so that's helpful. So I'm thinking the 8's are, are a good starting point. And I've got an 8 here. However, I also think that, well, 8 is also 2 times 4. And 4 is like 2 times 2. So if you remember when you used to do factoring, you might have done factoring in a previous grade. This is essentially a factoring tree, so we've ended up with 2 times 2 times 2, which is equal to 2 cubed. 2 cubed is equal to 8. We can take that 2 cubed and replace the 8 with that 2 cubed. So I'm going to put a couple boxes here and say this is for the first one which the 64 cubed times the 8 squared. I can take the 8 now that I've just said is 2 cubed and I'm going to plug it into that spot. 
So I've got 2 cubed. I've replaced the 8 with a 2 cubed because I've said they're equal to each other. They're equal to each other. Now I'm going to tackle the 64. 64 is 8 times 8. And that 8, I just said, was equal to 2 cubed. I could go down and I could say, well, it's 2 times 4, and then that's 2 times 2. But I've already figured out it was 2 cubed, so I've got 2 cubed times another 2 cubed. If I apply the product exponent law, I know that 2 cubed times 2 cubed is 2 to the 6th. So I can take that 2 to the 6th now and plug it into this box. So the 2 to the 6th is replacing the 64. So I've got 2 to the 6th cubed times 2 cubed squared. So 2 to the exponent 6, all raised to the exponent 3, is 2 to the exponent 6 times 3 times 2 to the exponent 3 to the exponent 2, which is 2 to the exponent 3 times 2, which is 2 to the 18th times 2 to the 6th. And when we multiply that out, the exponent product law says that when we multiply like bases, we keep the same base and add the exponents. So we end up with 2 to the exponent 24. I hope these tips help you in tackling some of the common exponent law problems that people have been running into. Mm -hmm.